Most supplements promise miracles, but usually give you expensive pee. Take Athletic Greens, AG1. Hyped by podcast giants like Andrew Huberman, Joe Rogan, Tim Ferriss, Chris Williamson, and Peter Atia. But what if I told you these guys are getting paid millions to promote it? Stick around because in this video, I'll uncover why AG1 might be the most overpriced scoop you'll ever drink and share the five supplements that actually deliver results without draining your wallet. AG1 relies on what's called a proprietary blend, a sneaky industry trick that lets companies stuff in tiny amounts of beneficial ingredients alongside cheap fillers without ever telling you how much you're actually getting. It's the supplement industry's equivalent of selling you mystery meat instead of prime steak and then expecting you to thank them for the privilege. After digging deeper into AG1, here's the blunt conclusion. You're paying premium prices for glorified grass clippings and it's essentially a multivitamin wearing an expensive disguise. Lots of hype, minimal nutrition. Remember, just because Andrew Huberman, Joe Rogan, Chris Williamson and Peter Atia rave about it, it doesn't mean it's worth your cash. As I said, they're making millions from promoting it. AG1 spent over 26.2 million a year on podcast advertising alone. Even lesser known influencers have told me they've been offered six figure deals to push this stuff. Think about that next time you reach for your wallet. Honestly, it's one of the biggest letdowns in recent supplement history. The alternative, IM8. It's pretty much a ripoff of AG1 with some added fiber, vitamin C, and a few random bits at ineffective doses. They've tried to use different lingo, complex, instead of proprietary blend. It's the same thing. I get trying to shove everything into one drink, but again, there's nothing to say how much of each compound. Another expensive multivitamin with even vitamin D and magnesium being dosed on the lower end. Save your money and don't fall for the marketing. While most supplements are snake oil, there are genuine exceptions. Let's get into what actually helps you, especially when you're doing everything else right. Creatine is possibly the most studied supplement in existence, proven to boost strength, muscle mass and recovery. It's also emerging as a powerful cognitive enhancer with promising research to suggest it may help offset mental fatigue and sharpen your focus even after a rough night's sleep. Ignore the myths. Creatine won't fry your kidneys, wreck your liver or steal your hair. Skip the overpriced fancy versions and stick to a basic creatine monohydrate and try and go for the CreaPure. That's the patented version. It's safe, effective, affordable and frankly a no-brainer in your routine. Most people can get away with three grams a day but new research is pointing to possible benefits for a bit more. I would suggest taking five grams a day after your workout in a shake or before with water is just fine. On non-workout days after breakfast with water. Some people are able to hit their protein targets just fine and don't need a protein powder. Most people struggle and this is where protein powder can give you a helping hand. It's extremely convenient, especially when traveling and it tastes great for the most part. I go for a whey protein, but not all whey is created equal. You've got concentrates, isolates, and hydrolyzed forms. Concentrates can sometimes cause gut chaos if lactose turns your stomach into a war zone. Isolates filter out almost all the lactose, making digestion smoother for most folks. And then there's hydrolyzed whey, which is broken down so thoroughly it's basically pre-digested. Think of it as baby food for bodybuilders. If someone tells you hydrolyzed whey is causing bloating and inflammation, they're either allergic to logic or trying to sell you their magic alternative. So if dairy typically treats your stomach like a punching bag, isolates or hydrolyzed whey are safer bets. When buying a protein powder, you want to buy a protein powder with as few ingredients as possible. The actual amount of protein in a scoop should be very similar to the scoop size. If they've added extra amino acids into it or anything else, best to give that brand a miss because they're likely skimping out on actual 
protein. If you're vegan, try to go for a blend of plants like pea and hemp or pea and rice. Fish oil isn't glamorous, but it appears to be beneficial. It could potentially improve heart health, your mood, joint health, brain health, lower inflammation and improve recovery. The two main players here are EPA and DHA. You want to aim for four grams total per day. Cheap supplement brands, you'll need 10 to 20 capsules daily. So I suggest using a quality brand like Jaro or Legion and take four soft gels daily, saving both your wallet and your throat from unnecessary punishment. I usually take two with breakfast and two with lunch. A vital mineral that's basically the Swiss army knife of nutrients, helping bone strength, insulin regulation, and even nerve function. Most people are probably low on it without even realizing it. Ever get unexplained cramps, muscle twitches, or notice your heart doing weird little skips like it's auditioning for a jazz band. Those could all signal a magnesium shortfall. Most people don't get regular blood tests, so they don't know if they're actually deficient. For example, migraine sufferers might find relief because magnesium naturally dampens nerve excitation, calming your brain. Supplementing around 200 to 400 milligrams daily can actually help restore balance. I recommend a magnesium biglycinate prior to bed on an empty stomach. Vitamin D is like the office intern of supplements. It's quietly keeping things running smoothly behind the scenes, even though no one really notices it until it's missing. Vitamin D can boost your mood, support your immune system, your hormones, and enhance overall health. Plus, a lot of people are actually deficient. I personally take 2000 IU daily with K2 to aid absorption. But I would recommend getting regular blood tests because everyone's different and you may need more. I take it in the morning with breakfast. Look, there are other supplements out there worth mentioning, especially if life's stress levels make you feel like you're stuck in an endless Monday morning. Ashwagandha and rhodiola are solid options to help dial that down. And of course, if your blood test screams you're lacking something, supplement accordingly. Citrulline malate or citrulline might even squeeze out some extra performance if you're already checking every other box. But honestly, most supplements are just icing on an already decent cake. No magic pills here, especially not fat burning supplements. Before you toss more money on supplements, do yourself a favor, check your fridge first. High quality food beats pills every day. Supplements should complement your diet, not replace it. Right now, I take all of these supplements daily, creatine, protein, vitamin D, fish oil, and magnesium. If you have any questions at all, comment below. If your goal is to lose fat and build muscle with a no-nonsense, science-backed approach, follow the link in the description and apply to my one-to-one -one coaching. Have the best day ever, and I'll see you in the next one.